Hey, hey, and welcome back to another learning Java 2D game programming video. So in our last video, we finished up the UI system for now by giving it an alignment. So now you can align your UI containers in nine different positions. So start, center, and end for each axis. And as you can see here, I used it for my thumbnail text in the previous video. So for this video, I want to add some information on the screen that is going to be useful for us. So we're going to use our UI system now to display information on the screen. And what I'm thinking is I want a little game timer here. And over here, I'm going to have two uh, texts basically saying how many people are currently sick and how many people are currently healthy that's something that we're going to want to know when we get into infecting others, uh, spreading disease. We want to be able to know how many people are sick and how many people are still healthy. So let's get to that. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to finish up the time class. So when we implemented this class, we didn't do it all the way. We only did what we needed at the time. So currently we have something called updates in start. Uh, but we never finished it, so we're not currently incrementing it. So we need an update method. So public void update. And I'm not going to take in a state just yet because we don't need it right now. So just increment updates since start. Whoop. There we go. And I'm also going to let this class know how to format itself. So uh, when we make this UI text later, we're just going to ask time for the formatted string. So let's just give it a method called, uh, what are we going to call it? Get formatted time. Isn't that super? All right. I'm going to start off by making a string builder. And that's because we're going to be adding to this string a lot. So let's just use the string builder instead of just plussing everything together. So first we need to know the minutes. And the way we know that, of course, is we take the updates since start, divide it by how many updates per second that uh, we've set it to. But now, of course, we only know seconds, so we need to divide it by another 60 to get the minutes. And then to get the seconds, let's start the same way. Uh, now we know this is the amount of seconds that has gone by since we started the game. But in order to get the remainder, we have to use this, let's see, where is that? There, modulus. So modulus 60. So whatever, get, whatever is left after we divide all of this. All right, now to actually build a string. So first we need to know if minutes is less than 10, then we need to start by adding a zero because otherwise it'll just say, you know, one or whatever. Now it says zero, one, and that's how we want it. So after that, let's, let's append, Jesus, let's append uh, minutes. And then let's append this um, character, this colon character. Um, which will divide minutes and seconds. And then let's do the same thing for seconds. So if seconds is less than 10, string builder append zero. Whoop. And then let's append the seconds. And then let's return the string builder to string. And I think that is it for that. So closing that off, let's make sure that we also update this, that we call the update method that we just created. There we go. Now it will update correctly. And now we need to use it inside of a UI element of some sort. And in this package is our UI system. But as you can see, if we go to the game state currently where we've tried this out, this will quickly grow very large. So I'm not going to keep all of it inside of this class. Instead, I'm going to make a separate class for each uh, actual container that we're going to use. 
So let's create a new UI package that is inside of the game package. So this will have game specific containers, which contain the setup code that is used. So it's just a way to organize our code so not everything is in the same place. So I'm gonna call mine UI game time. And I'm prefixing it with UI just so it's easier to see and find, of course, and know that this is a container that is gonna be used as a UI element. All right, so first we need to make the variables that we're gonna to wanna to update, right? Because we can have more UI elements or whatever that we're not gonna to wanna to update. We're gonna to wanna to set them once and then we're done. But the UI text that we have, the actual game time, we're gonna to wanna to update that. So we need a reference. Also, this of course needs to be a container. So give it, make it a horizontal or a vertical container since it's only gonna have one child, it doesn't really matter in this case. All right, but we need to set some more stuff in here. So first of all, let's give it an alignment. And I of course want mine to be top center. So, just import that. So the first is the x-axis, the horizontal direction, and here's where we want the center. And then the top, so the start for the y-axis. And let's just set this game time to something. Let's make it a new UI text. We don't know yet, so let's just set it to nothing. And this will be updated in the update method. And then let's make sure that we add the UI component that is game time to the container that is this. <laughs> All right, so I think that's enough for the setup. Now we need to override the update method. So public void update, and this takes in the state and make sure to import that. And now first let's remember to call super update for all of the sizing and positioning calculations that go on in this super class. And then let's make sure to update this game time. So say game time, set text, and we haven't generated that yet, so we will, but we can still finish this. So say state, get time, get formatted time. All right, let's go into this UI text and make this setter. So alt insert generate setter text. And that should be good. So now let's just make sure, I'm just gonna delete all of this because we don't need that anymore. So let's just make a new UI game time and it takes in the window size and let's hit play. So there you have it. Uh, it's working and it's updating as we'd expect. I'm gonna make some changes. So the first and most obvious is I don't want this red background, so we're gonna remove it. But also I just have to talk about this. As you can see, it looks like it's sort of, it's chopping off a little here at the end. And I know why that is. So when we calculate the width of this uh, object, this UI element, the string, uh, we're just using this string, of course. And so the string ends here, so the size ends here, but then we have this drop shadow and we're not taking that into account. But the drop shadow has an offset of two currently. So we need to add that when calculating this, the width. So let's get to it. Let's start by making this red background transparent and then let's fix the text. So going to the UI container, here you can see color red. So let's just give it a new color and I'm gonna set it to zero, 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 and zero. So zero for RGB, red, green, blue, and then the alpha also gets a zero. So this is just transparent. So now we fixed the first thing. Now let's go into the UI text. And here you can see that we're calculating the width. And to make this easier, let's actually just calculate that outside instead. So make it a width and just for consistency, let's also do that for height. So I just made local variables of that. Now we can say if drop shadow, so if we have a drop shadow, then we want to add the drop shadow offset to our width. So now we can just uh, bring all of this up because now it's short. 
new size of width and height. Now if we try that again. Now you can see that it looks much better and we get the entire drop shadow. So that was what we wanted and it looks quite well. All right, I'm just gonna check how much time I've used. Actually, I think we will do this in two videos because we this already took 10 minutes. So thank you for watching and I will see you soon. Hey, though.